Hi everybody, I'm Tabitha and I've read five more books. So you may notice our setting is a little different today. With everything crazy that's been going on in our lives lately, you know what? I just decided I want to be comfy when I sit here and chat with you about books. So welcome to my living room. If you've never watched one of these before and you're looking for my rating scale, you can now find that at the end of the video. I put a helpful timestamp in the description that'll let you jump right to it. Speaking of timestamps, there's also timestamps that'll let you jump to each of the five books that I'm about to review. These are books six through 10 for the month of October and grab those TBRs because some of them you're gonna wanna add. Ready? Let's go. The next book I read in the month of October was Heart of the Sundrum by Jessica Willis. This is a young adult age category fantasy novel. It was independently published in 2020 and it is 279 pages. Your synopsis. In this sequel to Soul of the Crow, you'll journey back into a world where reapers are the balance between life and death. But there's a new reaper in town, one that may have to strike a balance no other reaper has ever faced. So what didn't I like about this one? Well, the first thing is that this one has a few grammatical errors. It's nothing huge, nothing that ruined the book. And as with others, I think I can completely ignore it. But I do mention it for some of you who are a little stricter about your grammatical errors than I am. Second thing I can say I didn't like about this one is that there's this big moment way out in like chapter 21 that for me was like anticlimactic. I don't want to spoil anything. I'm really big about no spoilers on this channel, but I'll just say that there's this moment you're waiting for. You're waiting for somebody to learn something big and then you turn the page and boom, they just already know it. We don't get to be with them when they learn it. We don't get to see the shock of them learning it. Logically, I convinced myself that this must have happened and maybe I just missed it and someday I might reread it. But for now, I think that I'm disappointed I didn't get to experience that moment with the character. Third thing I can say that I didn't like about this one is that this book suffers from middle book issues, which is to say that you cannot read this one without reading the first one. Not that that's a bad thing, because in this case, the first one was amazing and you get to reward yourself by reading that first one. And I feel like this one though, you can't read it without the first and it's building to something huge in the third one. Again, not really an issue for me because I'm excited about the third one. But this means this one falls to like that middle book slump, right? Where we know the first one was great and we know the third one was great. And this one's great too, but it, it feels like it just has a little slump from the first one, if that makes any sense. But again, minor and it's little, but I'm getting ahead of myself. So what did I like about this one? Well, the first one is the characters. I love the two major characters of this trilogy, Akari and Sinista. They are amazing. You know that I like characters who grow and change with books. I like characters that feel real. I like characters I can relate to. These two are all of that and more. I absolutely love them. They are among my new favorite characters. I will definitely be rereading this book. These, these characters are like gold for me. Second thing I can say I like about this one is that it does pack an emotional punch. I felt like honest to goodness stress when the characters were doing something questionable and dangerous. I think I even posted about it on Instagram when I was reading it because I was like, what are they doing? They're stressing me out. I had heartbreak in this book. I mean, really the writing is just so well done that you don't just understand that they're experiencing these emotions. You like feel them with the characters. It was wonderful. Third thing I can say I liked about this one is that this book has some giant themes. Oh, I see them coming and I am here for it. Like this trilogy is going to nail home some major, major lessons. I love when a young adult series hits big, giant themes. You can tell that this trilogy is setting the ground for those big lessons. I'm anticipating them. I'm enjoying the journey to them. I mean, this is just gold. I am loving the big themes. So who do I think should read this one? If you are a young adult fantasy fan, you need to be reading this series. Like I cannot scream about this series enough to you. I'm grabbing you by the shoulders and shaking you right now and telling you to go get it. This trilogy is amazing. I'm serious. But also, if you're a fan of the first book in general, <clears throat> if you're not, go get it and you will be. Yeah. Um, also, if you are a reader who likes realistic characters, who you can fall in love with in fantastical situations. So what I mean is like, you like when we take characters who feel real, even though they're dropped into fantasy and things that aren't real, you are gonna love this book. I'm serious. If you call yourself a young adult fantasy fan at all, you need this trilogy, 100%.
My rating, I mean, obviously, I'm giving this one four stars. This book is great. The series is amazing. And I highly recommend you check this one out. Young adult fantasy fans are going to love it. So four stars for Heart of the Sun Gym by Jessica Willis. This next book was recommended based on my most recent five-star read before the month started. The next book I read in the month of October was Middle Game by Shannon McGuire. This is an adult age category fantasy novel. It was published in 2019 by Tor and it is 492 pages. This book was recommended to me based on my five-star review of The Seven and a Half Deaths of Evelyn Hardcastle, but coincidentally it is also the same author, although using a different um, like pen name, who wrote uh, Into the Drowning Deep, which I also gave five stars. Your synopsis. Roger and Dodger are twins who were separated at birth. They were created by Reed, an alchemist who created the twins to rise to the highest power. None of them are gods, at least not yet. So what didn't I like about this one? Well, the first thing I can say I didn't like is that this book is a lot to take in. It's a lot of detail, a lot of specific new information, a lot of change. Basically, you'll be processing this one for a long time. Well, I don't mind that, just consider it a warning if you do. If you don't like books that make you think and force you to process and pay attention to the book, this one's a thinker. You may not like it. Second thing I can say I didn't like about this one is that it's really a tough concept to grasp altogether. There's lots of references to a children's work that in itself is fiction, which means you're going to end up feeling like you're working from an incomplete set of data. You get some pieces of detail and then they get filled in by the end. You know, you learn pieces as you go, which I like when I like puzzles, but it can be incredibly frustrating if you don't like working from an incomplete set of data. I also can't guarantee that you're going to have all the answers at the end of the book. So consider that a content warning if that bothers you. Third thing I can say I didn't like about this one is that the villain in this one is like a weird, like question mark. You know a lot about him and you know a lot about his plan, but you feel like the motivation and the why are still things that you don't fully understand. Um, like, what did he think was going to happen? I, I don't know. Anyway, I can't say more because spoilers, but this guy is not my favorite type of villain. Um, yeah, I don't know. I don't see any like good seeds in him and I don't fully understand what he was going for. And so for me, that makes him the kind of villain that's just not my favorite. So what did I like about this one? Well, the first thing I can say I like is that this book notes the time. I once said that I don't like chapters that start with like a date because I feel like I have to keep track of how long it's been and is this important and what's going on and blah, blah, blah. This one tells you not only the date, but it says like three days or two days later or one week later. And I freaking love that because I didn't have to keep track of it and you were doing it for me. And that's just brilliant. Like, yes, can we do that from now on? Because that was really cool. Second thing I can say I liked about this one is overall, it's an incredibly intriguing concept. It's tough to explain. It's hard to grasp. And still, it's intriguing. I love books that make me think after I close them. And this one is definitely that. So for me, the puzzle and the hard to grasp concept was really cool. I like that. Third thing I can say I liked about this one is it's like time travel with a twist. I always like when something that's been done before gets explored in new and interesting ways. This one definitely has a unique take on time travel. I love the ending as it relates to that. In fact, I love that entire concept and playing around with things we thought we knew. That was great. Who do I think should read this one? If you are a fantasy fan, you want something thought provoking. You want something intelligent. And you know what? You just want something that wasn't written for teenagers and was written for adults and is going to make you think like an adult and have to grasp concepts like an adult. You're going to love this book. I also think if you're an urban fantasy fan, right? So you want a book that's here and now, but yet still introduces magical and fantasy concepts. You're going to love this book. My rating I gave this one four stars. This book will definitely please adult urban fantasy fans or people who want to break into that genre and try it for the first time. Just be ready for concepts that are definitely going to make you think. So four stars for Middle Game by Shannon McGuire. The next book I read in the month of October is A Red Winter in the West by C.S. Humble. This is an adult age category horror novel, although it has um, Western and paranormal leanings. It is independently published in 2020 and it is 286 pages. Your synopsis. 
Three years after the supernatural catastrophe at Yellow Hill, Annie and her mother work for the judge on the cattle ranch. Meanwhile, Carson Ptolemy draws ever closer to the heart of the society that killed his father. So what didn't I like about this one? Well, the first thing I can say I didn't like about this one is that the paranormal storyline with Sigurd, I don't know his name, it's juvenile this time around. It's unnecessarily bloody. It doesn't really carry the plot. It doesn't add anything to the story. It seemed like it was just there for the gore factor, and that's never my favorite. Second thing I can say I didn't like about this one is that there's no satisfaction for this. What I mean is that there's not enough characters you love who stick around to see this one all the way through. There isn't a satisfying ending to this one. Sometimes you don't get a lot of answers you were looking for. I mean, this happens sometimes when we're talking about the middle book in a trilogy because we're building up to something new. We're not going to give you a lot of answers this time. We have to up the stakes. But for this one, I felt like it was even more than some other trilogies. Third thing I can say I didn't like about this one is that I got lost as far as the sense of time goes. It was hard to keep a grasp on how long it had been since the first book. I think there's a time jump at the end before that final chapter, although I don't want to spoil things for you. It's just awkward. I'm not a fan of that, and I really honestly don't know how long this book's been. Like, I completely lost track of time for this one. I'm not sure if that was the purpose, but for me, it just wasn't the best. So what did I like about this one? Well, the first thing I can say that I liked is that turning the society, which are essentially like the regular humans, turning them into the horrors of the world instead of focusing on the supernatural was good. I mean, that's cool. Like the real horror in this world is definitely rooted in that society and those real people. And that's scary, but so cool. Second thing I can say I liked about this one, again, I said this about the first one too, is that the Western setting for this story is so awesome. It's amazing. I love taking the setting and playing around with the supernatural and horror stuff inside a Western setting. It makes the story different than everything else that's available in this genre. And it's just like, I love different. You know I love different. It's unique and it's cool. I really, truly love that and everything about it. I didn't find any major errors as far as like, whoa, that wouldn't be available in the West. Like, I didn't find any of that. So I just think you're really going to love it if you like when genres come together like that, like I do. Third thing I can say I liked about this one is that the weakness of characters is great. I love when a cast of characters is not perfect. I love when they are flawed. These characters aren't going to make every shot they take. They're not all super strong. They're real. They're flawed. And that's two of my favorite ways to describe characters. If you like that, you're going to like this one too. Who do I think should read this one? If you're a Western fan who is interested in throwing in some horror or supernatural into your Western, you need to give this series a try. Remember, this one is a series. I'd suggest you start with The Massacre at Yellow Hill. And if you like that one, give this one a go. My rating, I gave this one three stars. This one is good, but it sits at a weird triple Venn diagram niche of like horror, Western, and paranormal. But if you are right there in that niche or you like when genres overlap, you are going to love this one. So three stars for A Red Winter in the West by C.S. Humboldt. All right, we're going to do a fast review of this next one I read in the month of October, and this one is Carve the Mark by Veronica Roth. This is a young adult age category fantasy novel. It was published in 2017 by Catherine Teigen Books, and it is 468 pages. Your synopsis. In a galaxy powered by the current, everyone has a gift. Cyrus' gift is to bring pain and power. Akos' gift is unusual and may make him more important than he knows. Will they help each other survive? or destroy each other. I'm going to do a fast review of this one, but remember you can check out the full review, including what I liked and what I didn't like over on Goodreads. But who do I recommend this one for? Well, I would say if you like that slow burn romance arc, if you're a fan of that idea of like dancing around the idea of falling for someone and you like it to take an entire book, then you're probably going to like this one, especially if you like that in a young adult setting. Um, I would also say if you're into epic detailed world building and you don't mind if it's how it's manifested, you don't mind if it's a little problematic, you don't mind if you don't get all the information, you might like this one. Um, look, if you are not a huge young adult fantasy or science fiction fan, but you're bigger into like young adult romance and you want to try out sci-fi and fantasy, I don't know, you might like this one more than I did. My rating? 
I gave this one two stars. For me, it was really problematic in that it dabbled in a lot of genres without actually taking any of them seriously. So I had to go two stars for this one. Sorry. Carve the Mark by Veronica Roth, two stars. The next book I read for the month of October, fifth for this video, 10th for October, was Patchwork by Desiree Byers. This is an adult age category horror novel, but it is short stories. It is a 2020 release from Stitched Smile Publications, which is an independent publishing company, and it is 222 pages. This was the highest rated book on my TBR before the month started. Your synopsis. Four novellas eager to introduce you to some horrific tales. Meet Bailey, the neglected, spiteful child. Meet an ASMR addict who can't be satisfied. Meet a dead man who dug his way out of a grave to reunite with his wife. And meet a grown woman who bands together with her inner child to slay a demon. And they all await you inside these pages. So what didn't I like about this one? Let me give the content warnings for you right up front. If you are bothered by child abuse, death, torture, neglect, sexual assault, you're going to want to avoid this one. You've been warned. The second thing I can say I didn't like about this one is I needed to put this one down and process it between each of the short stories because they are dramatically different. They don't like run together smooth. You're going to want to take a break, put it down, get, a, get yourself a cup of coffee or go, Whoa, oh my gosh, the endings are intense. You're going to need a minute before you jump into the next one. Third thing I can say I didn't like about this one is that it is gory and graphic. Look, I don't have a problem with this, especially, especially, that is not a word. I'm sorry, grammar teachers. Let me try that again. I didn't have a problem with this, especially knowing that it was horror going into it, but it's worth mentioning if you do. This one is gory and it is gross. So what did I like about this one? The first thing I can say I liked is that, I think I've said this before, my favorite type of horror is horror that focuses on what people do to each other. In these novellas, that is exactly what we are dealing with. Sometimes there are like fantasy twists on it, but the bottom line is these are scary people doing scary things. I love it. They were legitimately terrifying, but wow. Second thing I can say I liked about this one, typically in a short story like collection, you have your least favorites, right? The author here made a smart choice. She only put four stories in this book, meaning these are only her favorites. She just gave you like the four polished gems for you to enjoy. I mean, I have a favorite. Bailey is going to be like haunting my nightmares and sticking in my mind for a really long time to come. But all four of these are well-written, shocking, and absolutely terrifying. The third thing I can say I liked about this one is those endings. Whoa. Okay, so all four of these end differently, which I fully appreciate. I was afraid that we were going to get like, you know, you get that style. Like, you know, when you read, watch an M. Night Shyamalan movie, you know to look for a twist that you should, that you wouldn't have known at that first one. So I don't like when endings are predictable. These four all end in a completely different way. They feel like they end the way the story needed them to, which that's a weird thing to say, but like, I fully appreciate this author. I feel like she looked at the possible endings and she went, no, I need to go with the ending that fits the story, which is really cool. I love that. They all are like a gut punch, uh, but in a different way. Really, this collection is like, a masterclass in how to write short horror. Just really, really well done. Who do I think should read this one? If you are a fan of horror stories, I am not kidding you, go buy this book. Like right now, you are not going to regret it. They are my new favorites for sure. I have a feeling this will be like a reread every October when I wanna get in a spooky mood. They're short, they're fast, but they are awesome, seriously. I also think if you're a short story fan, who's into dark stories and you're okay with them being spooky for the right season, I mean, get this one. They are well-written, well-crafted short stories that I think short story fans will appreciate as well. In fact, this reminds me of like a grown-up version of those scary stories to tell in the dark books. Like, did you ever read those when you were a teenager? These are like grown-up versions of that. Like they're scarier and they're darker, but they're that same like short burst of scary story. Yeah, if you were a fan of those as a kid, go get them as an adult. That's my recommendation. My rating, five stars, like 
Five stars. This will cross genres. A lot of people are going to love this one. This is exactly what I wanted from horror short stories this time of year. And I highly, highly recommend this one. Guys, go get this one. Patchwork by Desiree Byers. Five stars. Okay, my friends, that is it for me chatting with you about books today. I hope you enjoyed um, our new relaxed setting here. I know I was more comfortable. If you are still here, please make sure you drop a comment to let me know what you thought today. Hit subscribe and tap that little bell so you know when I'm back. Keep plotting the path to your own dreams, and I will see you next time. Bye! <laughs>